In this movie, we're going to explore some of the physical principles behind the formation of magnetosome chains within magnetotactic bacteria. As we see from this image, magnetotactic bacteria typically contain a linear chain of magnetosomes within their cell. Magnetosomes are all magnetized along the length of the chain to produce a net magnetic moment that is large enough to provide efficient alignment of the cell with respect to the Earth's magnetic field. Here we're going to illustrate how the natural magnetostatic interaction between magnetosomes both helps and hinders the formation of these chains. To do this, we investigate the behavior of a model system of interacting neodymium supermagnet beads. Each supermagnet bead has a north and a south pole. The north pole of each bead attracts the south pole of a neighboring bead and vice versa. As we add more and more beads to the system, this magnetic interaction between north and south pole leads to the self-assembly of a linear chain of beads, each bead magnetized parallel to the length of the chain. A bead inside the chain interacts favorably with two adjacent beads. However, the beads at the ends of the chain only interact favorably with one adjacent bead. If the growth of the chain is not strictly controlled, the system will collapse into a ring structure so that the ends of the chain are eliminated. This ring structure has a lower magnetostatic energy than that of a linear chain. As we add more beads, the ring breaks down into a cluster and then we start to form another linear chain offshooting from the cluster. The structures formed by interacting supermagnet beads are identical to those observed in self-assembled arrays of magnetic nanoparticles. This image illustrates a range of structures formed by cobalt nanoparticles. We find exactly the same mixture of rings, clusters and chains as observed in the supermagnet bead experiment. As we continue to build the system, we see it collapses into its lowest energy state, which is a jumble of beads all magnetized in different directions. Such a structure would be unsuitable for magnetotaxis because it doesn't have a large enough net magnetic moment. The net magnetic moment of a cluster will be too low to provide efficient alignment of the cell in the Earth's magnetic field, and therefore would be unsuitable for magnetotaxis. To build a linear chain of magnetosomes and avoid collapsing into a ring or cluster, the bacteria have to exert some influence on the growth of these chains. The only way to prevent chain collapse is by physically holding the bees in the desired configuration. This image illustrates how this physical restraint is achieved within the cell. Throughout the center of each cell is a filament, shown here in green, onto which the magnetosomes are attached via a special protein, the MAMJ protein, shown here in red. Each magnetosome is growing within an organic membrane that is just the right size and shape to produce magnetosomes that are within the single domain size range for magnetite. The magnetosomes are attached to the filament like beads on a string, which then attract each other to form the chain. If you genetically modify the bacteria by removing the gene responsible for creating the MAMJ protein, the magnetosomes are no longer able to attach themselves to the filament and the chain will naturally collapse to form a cluster-like arrangement as shown here. Such clusters are not efficient for magnetotaxis because they have no net magnetization and therefore don't generate a large external magnetic field. We can illustrate this principle very easily using this demonstration. We've formed a rotating compass out of seven supermagnet beads. The chain of beads on the left has a large net magnetic moment and generates a large external magnetic field. This field interacts with the compass causing it to rotate. However, if we take the same chain and make it into a ring, then its net magnetic moment is reduced to zero and there is now no external magnetic field generated. We can illustrate this by using images from electron holography. Again, these are cobalt nanoparticles that are arranged into rings. You see the magnetic flux is entirely contained within the ring and there is very little external magnetic field. The lack of external magnetic field means that the ring of beads no longer causes the compass to rotate. Here we illustrate what happens if we try to force two halves of a chain together that are magnetized in opposite directions. We can see that there is initially repulsion between the two chains, but if we push them close enough together, they will stick. However, the chain is kinked and the bead in the middle is forced to be magnetized at a high angle to the chain axis. The same phenomenon can be imaged using electron holography in real magnetotactic bacteria. 
The chain on the left is kinked and has been deliberately magnetized such that each half is magnetized in an opposite direction. The central magnetosome is forced to be magnetized almost perpendicular to the chain axis, just as in the case of the supermagnet beads. The previous image showed that some magnetotactic bacteria are capable of building double chains of magnetosomes, with each chain magnetized in the same direction. Here we can illustrate the formation of double chains using the supermagnet beads. By taking two chains magnetized in the same direction and forcing them together, we see that the chains initially repel each other. However, if the beads are forced close enough together, they interact to form a stable double chain structure. Note that the two chains form a staggered arrangement, so that one chain is displaced by half the particle's diameter with respect to the adjacent chain. This is exactly the same arrangement as is, as is observed in natural double chain bacteria.